We live in Sanford. Roomies. I don't live in Sanford Hall, but I visit friends here often. I live here. I live here. Have you heard any rumors about the third floor being haunted? Uh, from day one. Yep. <clears throat> I have. I've heard a lot of rumors. I have heard rumors. Pretty freaky up there. I went into the spot like that's above my bed, so it says like bloody murder or whatever. Hear a good bit of rumbling. There's a bloodbath. It's murder written on the wall. There's been some one or two like weird things that have happened. Just apparently haunts the hall. As a uh, growing cookie killer slip in the 60s. But it's it's really creepy looking. 3 a.m. I'm alone in my room and I hear something and I'm like, I'm about to die. A girl in like a long time ago, maybe like the 50s, I don't remember. See, her nickname was Cookie, and as Cookie the Ghost now, but she allegedly killed herself. She slit her wrist and her throat. But they found like, like cuts on her neck. Which isn't normal for a suicide. So it could be more than that. Yeah. So like, if they don't they think that, yeah. Someone like a murder trip. There are a few written accounts or documents about Cookie's death. Most of the information surrounding this mystery is passed down by word of mouth. As the story goes, a long time ago, a girl named Cookie was found dead on the third floor of Sanford Hall with her throat and wrists slit. The official report is that her wounds were self-inflicted, but depending on who you ask, many believe that she was actually murdered. Since her death, people have allegedly experienced supernatural occurrences inside the building. For the most part, the story is true, or at the very least, can't be proven false. There definitely was a student named Betty Jean Cook, who was affectionately nicknamed Cookie by her peers. She died at the young age of 20 during her senior year due to cuts around her throat in an act of suicide, but didn't leave a suicide note as reported by the Macon Telegraph. Several days before her death, she had injured her back and had, according to a Milledgeville ghost tour, been missing since. A search was mounted and quickly found her barely alive on a blood-soaked mattress in her dorm room. According to the aforementioned article, both of her wrists were slashed as well as her throat. She was carried out of the hall on a stretcher and whispered what very well could have been her last words, please don't let me die. In her time at Georgia State College for Women, Cookie was popular and respected by her classmates. As one of her peers wrote in Cookie's obituary, she was one of us. She was just another student trying to get a good education. She was a part of this community of girls. We all love you, Betty, and you will be missed forever. Why would a girl, respected and loved by her peers, commit suicide in one of the most gruesome ways possible? There's a few theories on this. As previously stated, many believe that Cookie was murdered and that was framed as a suicide. Other theories deal with whether or not Cookie was pregnant at the time of her death. One version of the story is that she decided to take her own life after discovering that she was pregnant. The other version of the story is that Cookie wasn't pregnant, but her classmates began spreading rumors that she was. Her classmates then began to mistreat her, or at the very least look down on her because she lost the respect she used to be treated with. She took her own life. In the case of Betty June Cook, there are, unfortunately, no definitive answers. There is no proof she was murdered, and no proof she committed suicide. In the lack of this proof, there is also a lack of motive. There is no way to prove whether or not someone would have wanted to murder Cookie, just as there is no way to prove whether or not she was pregnant, nor whether her classmates were spreading rumors. The only definitive fact in Cookie's life is that while she was alive, she was loved, and after she died, she was remembered.